<laughs> All right, listen up, spuds. This is Zap Brannigan, eh? master of time, space, and everything else in between. And, uh, oh, yeah, winner of this year's Modesty Award. Yeah. You're listening to You Suck with Al and Tom. You're one stop for this sort of thing. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Welcome. to you, you Suck Podcast. I'm Alex Whiteley. And I am Tom Bruno. But I'm going to take a step back because Tom has put these shows together, so he should definitely take the lead on this one. Please, oh, sir. Please. Thanks, dear. Fucking, you can hold my hand anytime you want, though. Fucking, you you deserve it. You oh, thank it. You oh, it, oh, no, you're No, really, your wife does. I no, just happen to get very you lucky no, you in you the go. same. You go. You go. You're no, pretty. No, you're no, pretty. No, you no. Hang up first. Um, fucking, yeah, so... I have not been getting a lot of guests. If you look at past episodes, um, I get a lot of uh, I get a, I get a lot of guests sometimes. Um, hold on a second, let me just fix this. I love that. I, I get a lot of guests sometimes. <laughs> it's brilliant. Sometimes, sometimes I get guests. Sometimes I don't. And uh, for a while, like I was hot, right, Alex? Like I was fucking emailing you, and messaging like every week. Like, I got this motherfucker. I got this motherfucker. I got this motherfucker. Well, Kaz made me. Kaz has been just fucking phenomenal. Oh no, 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 no! Right now, your wife owns the fucking getting guest spot, dude. Like, there's no mm. comparison to how much work your wife's put in. I'm saying like prior to this, wait, wait, prior. Let's uh, before we. My wife break. is cuckolding me on my own podcast. It's fantastic. She really is. She's she amazing. Really is. She's, she's amazing. So much better than us. Um. So I was. I was really getting the guests for a hot second. Um, we took a break. I started plugging away at trying to get guests again. Not a thing that was happening. Like all my fucking guests just kind of fell through and like none of them responded. And I was like, fuck, dude, I just don't have it anymore. Like what? That certain something that I had, maybe it was, you know, the fucking the huspa or the fucking balls or whatever it might be that was allowing me to get guests before. It was no mm. longer there. Alex's wife, on the other hand, was just fucking flooding in the gas, showing us answers of yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. And I'm like, oh, my God, Kaz is doing the work. Thank God. Oh, Someone's on, on top give it of too much. Don't give it too much praise. I will. I will because it lets me be, you know, I, I so I can be modest so I can brag in a second. So fucking um, – I was going through my old messages. I got I got two guests for today. Um, and they were this is not the day we record. Like me and Alex really had to kind of work this whole thing out. Luckily, That's why I'm saying both- like this because uh, I'm we're gonna be up till late, late tonight doing this. Yeah, so I'll set up on the dining room table. Yeah, man. Fuck. And so like um it, we end up ha- we both had the day off. So we're like, fuck it, we can do this. Um, so what happens is I sent an email back in October. If everyone remembers the Halloween special, I was getting guests that were Halloween based, and during that time is when I emailed this guest. Um, a little little background. I'll, I'll get more into it once the guest gets here. Um, but I love horror movies. Everything about horror movies. There was a certain film that really just punched me right in the face when I saw it when I was a young kid. And we got a guest from that show. So that's who'll be coming on. He's a guy named Bob the Wire with Pamela Anderson. Yes. Oh, I love Bob Wire. It's so great the way that she <laughs> hid that chlamydia <laughs> from Tommy Lee. Call me, no. <laughs> babe. I didn't watch that movie. That movie sucked. Like there's a reason I, why I, I brought that up. Obviously, for later. I mean, is, is there? Man. Did you? Is he in there? Is he in Barbed Wire? <laughs> no, <laughs> we should ask him that. So, how, what was it like in Bob's Wire? Uh, <laughs> His family's pussy, as roomy as it seems. Did you use it as a soundstage? Um, <laughs> no, I don't know. But like, um, Ken Free was in the original 1978 Dawn of the Dead, which has a huge impact, and so much so that, um, oh my god, you have ghosts. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, 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 don't no, stop it, dude. We literally are doing this on an off day, and Timmy's just being Timmy, man. It's all good. Um, if Tom, if if I was doing it in my kitchen, you hear Thomas go, Watch out. Oh, watch out! Bang, bang! I'm not gonna shoot you! Bang, bang! He's just playing on the VR. Console. It's usually something more embarrassing than that. It's like, why won't my poop stop wiping or something? You know, I don't know. <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> you're like, Excuse me, be away. They use the bidet, son, and then you fucking. <laughs> What's up? Um, so I got this guest, but in the meantime, fucking before Ken gets here, um, let's uh, let's catch up. Fucking, I have not watched this week's Mandalorian yet. I was saving it for tonight. Oh, even. Uh, I I was saving it. I was saving it. Um, but I saw you teasing some shit. Um. Uh, you said they brought back one of your favorite villains, so I'm only going to take guesses as to who it is. But don't spoil it. Darth Maul? No. <laughs> no? You have no. a better villain than Darth Maul. Oh, fuck yes. I mean, Darth, uh, Darth Maul's up there. I mean, originally as well. And unoriginally, Darth Vader's up there as well. I've got like three top villains, and uh, Darth Maul and Darth Vader are both there. I'd say they've got all three of them sort of equally set. I don't know. It's really hard to pick, actually, as far as villains, because... Um, there's that they just they, you don't even have to go like 
upper scale to be a good villain. It's just how it's portrayed and the way they they, they do they do things. But I, I don't know. I'm is not going to tell it, you. Is a general fucking what's his face with the four arms the robot guy? No, no, not him. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess all the villains. There's only so many because <laughs> I can get through this pretty quickly. Um, it can't be the emperor. He's fucking way dead. He's mm. so dead. Yeah, yeah. Not fuck him. that guy. I'd, I'd be so. Fun. I'd, I'd be so mad if they were like, it's the it's the emperor. I love the emperor. I'd be like, you fucking daft, man. Somehow, Palpatine <laughs> has come back. I'm getting I'm getting palpitations from Palpatine. Um, so 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 much shows up that you're very excited about. I will watch mm-hmm. it tonight to 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 get and get into it. Well, actually, we've got time in between these two podcasts. Maybe you can watch. Maybe maybe I do have to. Uh, uh, we had a snowstorm here. Like we are just no shit snow a snowstorm in Vermont. No well, up until like last night, it wasn't that bad. Like we get like a snowstorm, but like me and my wife really don't get affected by that type of shit. We just drive right over it. We have a big ass tank of a vehicle. We're just like, Mah! like whatever, who cares? Uh, last night it snowed so fucking much that I literally had to get my ass out there this morning and like shovel out the end of our driveway just so we can make it through. So I'm waiting on a plow guy. Just like in the movies, you know, <laughs> Mr. Plow, Mr. Yes. Plow. <laughs> uh, that's my name. My name again is Mr. Plow. Mr. Oh Plow. My God. Um, hey, Homer, say hello to the Plow King. <laughs> Barney, you stole my idea. Oh, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of friendly competition. <laughs> God, that's a great fucking episode. And who else is in that episode, you might ask? Alex? Uh, Ken Foray. You're so lame. I hate you. Uh, pure <laughs> West. Um, that was the first time that they had Adam West on uh, The Simpsons. Really? Yeah. How many yeah, times doing... did he appear in The Simpsons? Because I know obviously Family Guy is there every like. Oh, yeah. yeah. But episode. like how many times? I don't know how many times him. I just I just got lost. I'm by myself. That's OK. Um, to answer your question, Alex, um, he has been in this show a lot, um, but not a ton to the point. I know you left. Don't worry. I'm just continuing on like you did. No, no, good. You did well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, he's yeah, been in there quite a bit. But like the thing is, like, it's hard to tell which one is actually him. And if he actually came back, because unlike Family Guy, where he was the mayor, like they would just say Adam West. And sometimes it'd probably be cheaper, and more effective just to have somebody else come on and be Adam West. But that's the one episode that I know that he was actually um there there's another one at the wax museum where they were like um <laughs> where him and robin were in the thing and they're like they're just wax dummies and he's like should we do something he's like no keep quiet and they fucking keep on facing forward but um he has this thing where he's like talking to uh Homer's talking to the kids. He's like, look, kids, Batman. And like, that's not Batman. He's like, of course I'm Batman. Don't you remember the Bat 2Z? And he starts doing the fucking dance from the 1960s. And (laughs) Homer and the kids start backing away really slowly. God damn, it's so great. I love Simpsons. They're great. It is good. It is good. We did have a debate, by the way, on uh, on Thor skin on Wednesday about um, uh, who was it? Was it Moose? I think it was Moose. Wanted to throw the Simpsons in Butchug Island from when they got bad, they were like, he's like, they should have given him an honorable death. They should have stopped writing it when it was good. And rather than let it die a, a slow, miserable death. And I was like, I can't put anything of Simpsons on Butchuck Island because no. he, like out of context, it looks terrible. Um, yeah, but maybe he's Not got even- a point. Maybe, Mm. Mm. what season was he claiming to be the bad one well we put it to the the, the comments and one of the comments was from season eight and we were like no man that was, no. Amazing. It was amazing like but i said i said it was fair to say that from the moment the opening credits changed the moment the yeah. opening credits, credits changed yeah. that's kind of when it started getting bad mm. yeah i mean you're, you're you're pretty much on point i would say it it really got bad after the movie which is when the tre- the opening credits changed um i stopped kind of like watching it religiously the season with harry potter so if that tells you anything where they had the harry potter in the treehouse of horror and um mr burns was the dragon the lord monty mort um as it were <laughs> and that's that's when i stopped watching i remember that distinctly being like the last halloween set special that i was like all right everyone shut the fuck up with simpson drawn and you know my mom though my mom on the other hand she still she still thinks it's good there have been, I mean, like there have been the odd good episode. Don't get me wrong. We used to have it on like during dinner, you know. Like, we have Big Bang yeah. on at the moment, like, but because there's a show and we're yeah. like, there's, 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 there are meals when we sit at the table, but m- the majority of them we do like most families do sit on the sofa and watch some TV, right? So we're watching, yeah. we watch, we're watching Simpsons for a bit. We tried Futurama for a bit. Timmy likes it, but Kaz isn't too keen because what? Uh, I, I think she would watch it, but she, there's like the, the 
the the, the comfort TV shows that she enjoys. Gotcha. You know, like like your Big Bang Theories or your Simpsons or your, you know, I don't know. I, I, I totally get it. I, I a thousand percent get it. It's just like, but I feel like there's such a smooth transition from The Simpsons to Futurama. Like they are not the same show at all, but it's really easy to see the translation between the two, of course, being done by the same studio, the same creators, the same different writing group, though. Like they have one, the Futurama had one of the smartest writing uh, crews in the history. They had more doctorates than you can count. It's fucking insane. I wasn't a fan of Futurama. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I want yeah, to say I know. <laughs> as a guy that was a host of a show, um, bite my oh, shiny funny. metal podcast and that's fucking funny. um and back to the Futurama, fucking which was the best game ever that we got stolen from us by people that say they created it first. I don't see any proof. <laughs> can we can we talk a bit about Sebastian Stan for a sec, please? Sure. Uh I mean, I always thought he was a really wooden actor. I mean, I, I get Bucky Barnes is like one of those characters, kind of like really haunted. I've lived a hundred years, even so many people died, done terrible things, blah, 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 blah. But in Pam and Tommy, uh, the um, the the new Disney Disney Plus series, he is amazing as Tommy Lee, the drummer from mm. Motley Crue. And um uh what's the name? Is it Lily James who plays Pamela Anderson? They just, they look amazing. They're fantastic. This show, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it other than to tell you guys. One, Seth Rogen is unrecognizable. He is skinny. I mean, he lost weight before for the Green Hornet, but he's like unrecognizably stick thin. I wouldn't say stick thin. He looks healthy. He looks good, right? So Seth Rogen looks amazing. Who's he, um, who's he playing the, in the show? He's the guy that stole the tape. The original oh because it's about the sex tape oh is that okay that makes a lot more sense now because like i kind of got that i thought it was it's just about, about all that whole... shit because it went nuts didn't it that sex tape shit yeah, went crazy. yeah 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 fucking he steers a, his uh, yacht with his dick alex i mean <laughs> that was everywhere i remember that was like it's... the first celebrity sex tape i ever heard about ever yeah me too it's was, it was kind of about that i mean we were in the uk it was kind of like it was like i think it kind of pretty much started here with like jordan and um, there was a TV host as well. What the fuck was his name? And he had a threesome with this girl. Um, oh, God, it was... Oh, my God, I can't remember. And then there was the the, the woman that had the affair with uh, David Beckham as well. What? what was, her name? Was, she, was he married to the Spice Girl at the time? Yeah. <gasps> he I'll cheated on a Spicy Girl? Yeah, he did. What the fuck is wrong with him? I mean, it's not like it was Sporty Spice, but or like, you know, Scary Spice or any other good Spice Girl. But he cheated on the lesser of Spice Rebecca Girls. Lose. How dare he? That's it. Rebecca Lou's he had an affair with. That's that's like, like legendary. If you're British, you kind of know about that and you're my age. Um, but yeah, this that, that, that show, Pam and Tommy, is definitely worth watch, by the way, because they put so much work into it. Lily James is the girl from, have you seen Baby Driver? You remember Baby Driver? Uh, no. The Sweet, I didn't watch it. The sweet Girl. Uh, behind it that worked in the cafe she's been loads of films since um uh, she plays pamela anderson and you don't fucking recognize her as her she's just, she just looks like pamela anderson and uh, really? her tits they're made to look like pamela anderson's i thought it was cgi but they use like press plates and shit like to make it look uh... real and they, <laughs> they they also use cgi okay this is a little bit of a spoiler but it's more of an incentive to watch it they use cgi <laughs> for, for his dick. Yes! <laughs> for his dick. I mean, I, mean Seb- I was like, Sebastian Stan of like the MCU is going to get his dick out, is he? It's like panning down, and then there's just this glorious dick, and she's just like, oh my God, it's beautiful. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. And oh one more God, bizarre fact beautiful. before you go and watch this. Yes. The dick bends itself up and starts having a conversation with him. Oh, did they start a podcast? <laughs> it's more like a, a, a question <laughs> of uh, of uh, uh, it's like you know you have the little de- devil on shoulder, your conscience, your devil yeah. on the shoulder. It's his dick arguing <laughs> with him. It was going, don't do this, over man. Over on each side, fucking be like, you should totally record yourself having sex. No, you shouldn't. And it's like, shut up, dick. Uh, my um, camera's unplugged. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, that's what you deserve. You fucking see that's what happens when you when you make me laugh like that. Your camera shuts off, you fuck. Um <laughs> you can't see this. this is what blind people must see. Fucking so you watch Pam and Tommy. Where do you find the time to watch it? Um, I watched it last night. Oh. Um, let me just uh let me just I'm sorry, I saw my uh, camera out. Why is it not working? Give me if a second. the queen if the queen had a sex tape, 
from yeah. the fifties when she was still in her twenties, would you watch it? No. What? <laughs> the fuck's wrong with you? I bet you that'd be amazing. Fucking royal sex tapes, dude. Oh my god. Like fuck fuck that shit that Harry did with his dick hanging out or whatever that, that stupid shit. I'm saying like full fledged double penetration, full insertion on the queen, like having her, you know, over the crown jewels, fucking getting pegged. Some guy, some like strapping young Russian dude, probably because he just saved their asses from World War II. He like throws on the crown and he's like, oh, he's like uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, he's I'm, like, I'm not nowhere near my microphone right now, but I'm gonna have to stop you, I'm afraid. Um, he's, because he's like, he's like, do you want me to put it in the boot, governor? And then she, you're gonna start a war. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? Actually, um, that that reminds me, uh, and strangely that you say that, and it reminds me of something. Oh shit, no, some, some bullshittery. Um, but all, obviously, all the stuff that's going on with like Joe Rogan at the moment, man, is absolutely fucking oh, insane. Like, we wow. need to talk about this because obviously we're podcasters. Uh, we both enjoy Joe Rogan uh, from time oh. to time, um, okay. and yeah. So he's uh, for people that aren't aware. Neil Young and a few other dinosaurs have decided they want to take their music off Spotify because uh, Joe Rogan is, is spreading what, misinformation. Now, listen, yeah. most of the people that are talking about this are people that have never listened to Joe Rogan. They do not understand the context, right? He, yeah. Joe Rogan does not ever... I mean, the people that come on his show may try and spread misinformation, but it's an open conversation. He invites people on to discuss them, not to promote them. And this is yeah. the, the this is what is important when it comes to us as podcasters. This is like this is this could change things for us. Uh, I don't think it's I, going to, but it could. No. It has the potential to. It does. Um, it definitely has the potential. And I think that's gonna change. I think you're right though. It is gonna change podcasting in weird ways because Joe the reason Joe Rogan can get away with what Joe Rogan does is a couple of reasons. One, Spotify paid him a fuck ton of hundred million dollars hundred million dollars to go do a show on spotify so they're not just going to give that up for anybody they're not like like money spent like we already did that if you guys had a problem you should have listened to joe rogan's show years ago and then said hey by the way we're gonna pull our music if you don't take the shit off they don't give a fuck they already paid their and i guarantee that there's nothing bad or that has affected him negatively in the time that he's uh done what he's done if anything mm. it's um it's really funny because um the streisand effect if you're not aware mm. is when you uh, complain about something so much um that it becomes bigger because you've complained about it and it's because barbara streisand complained about a picture of her house that was in the press. She wanted it taken off. And because she complained about it, everybody knew what they were looking at and wanted to look at it more. <laughs> so like, this was weird. And even Barbara Streisand just threatened to take her music off Spotify. Wow. And they were like, this thing is literally named after you. So everybody's talking about, he's probably have more listeners now than ever in the, you know, yeah. So, right. and don't get me wrong, like, I haven't listened to Rogan since you went to Spotify. I don't like, nope, me neither, but they, I, I don't I, like, I understand it. I understand yeah. why people might get like that, but. <clears throat> If you if you think that he's not going to call people out on the show, just remember the uh, the whole Tom the, the the cringe fest that was the Tom DeLonge episode. Yeah, dude. Uh, um. So just by the way, everyone should listen to Spotify though, because I uh, guess which podcasts are on Spotify besides the Joe Rogan, uh, just r right next to his podcast. By the way, if you actually look, it's it's on the same rating scale. Um, yeah, yeah. you well, suck. You suck podcast is on there too, so definitely check that out. Um, you suck podcast. Yeah, that's where we are, right next to Joe Rogan and Burkcast, the one, the, one, the, the only, only. <laughs> um, the one, the only. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I don't I don't foresee anything negative happening for it, but I haven't listened in a long time because I don't like the commercials breaking up. I prefer the commercials in the very beginning. So then, you know, you can get them out of the way and you have a full well, conversation. There is a way but, to get rid of them. And that bus involves money, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. fuck money. I don't, I don't have any. So you're out of they're out of luck. Um, But the thing is about that is not about the money part, about like the whole Joe Rogan of it all is. Um, he, he admitted himself in a, in an interview that like, he's like, normally I have like two sides of the coin. Like I'll have somebody come on and talk about like, you know, why they shouldn't get vaxxed. And then I'll have a doctor come on right afterwards at the yeah. next episode too, and say why it's important to get back. So you can get both sides. And just because like, he's got a ton going on and he didn't like balance out his fucking interviews. Doesn't mean he's going to not going to break that. That doesn't mean that's his stance on life. Like Alex said very, very uh, poignantly a couple minutes ago, it, 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 he does this. He brings on people to get 
get the full story from everybody. He doesn't care. Like he he had fucking what's his face on n- numerous times. Uh, what's what's his face? The one that's like, and the lizard people are gonna rape your children. Alex that? Jones. Alex Jones. Um, Alex. He had Alex Jones on. And him. Eddie. Eddie Bravo. And Eddie Bravo. Wow, <laughs> I forgot about Eddie Bravo. He stopped having Eddie Bravo on. Quite maybe that's why. They're probably like, yeah. Eddie, maybe you should stay home for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I mean, but like he's had like a lot of I mean, still he still has like all the, the confrontational people on. He still has all the doctors, all the physicists. So it, nothing's changed in his wheelhouse. It's just, you know, it's Joe Rogan for fuck's sake. He, um, I feel and like okay, the reason why the Queen reminded me of this is because now <laughs> that this happened, the British press are doing what the British the, the British press do best, digging up dirt on people. I'm being assholes, basically. And um, I remember uh, they brought this thing up. I, met, I was looking last night on the radio. While I was looking for, and they brought up a story where he was mocking the Queen and how a reaction to Meghan Markle and, and the whole situation there. And I was like, "You re- are you fucking serious?" Everybody took the piss out of the Queen during that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it was kind of it was, it was kind of shitty. Like she's she's really. I mean, okay. Thing is, I won't blame the Queen because like. You know how people say things like, oh, you're from a different time. She's literally from a different time period. The 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 queen is old as fuck. Like, think about it. When World War II was going on, she was in her early 20s, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, she was. She, yeah, she's getting on. You know, she's Dude, in her 90s. Dude, yeah. she still is, do she still do things like like does she like show up and do I don't pay attention like I don't care about it like you do. She's actually like your main politician and shit or not parliament by stretch, but like But this it doesn't matter how high of a status you've got. Status, look at that, that's not an American status. Status. Fuckers. You've had you've done this to me, you suck, you fuckers. Um <laughs> um an old lady's still gonna like fart when she walks, when she bends over and she yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like she's still an old deer. Like, doesn't matter. So, I, I think she has got reduced, um, reduced uh, uh, ta- tasks and stuff. Now she gets a lot of uh, the family to go out and do things and stuff. Obviously, I saw, not. I saw Harry. a funny. I saw. <laughs> I saw a funny meme though the other day. It was or not meme. It was like stories. Like I like her to read. Uh, I like her to read the the long stories of like you know the twenty five worst or most ironic pictures. Or it was like spoke too soon. I think it was what it was. And on Time Magazine, it was uh, Prince Charles, and it said the man who will be qu- will be king. And it's like, oh shit, no, we won't <laughs> fucking jump ahead. To, you know, a thousand years later, and that motherfucker's still not king. So he'll never be king, right? Like he does not get that. I, I think she, I I genuinely this is a the opinion for a lot. I mean, there are a few. Of, oh God, there's lots of royalists in the UK still that are a huge fan of the royal family, and I don't even care if I offend you guys. I'm sorry because we're allowed to have an opinion, but I don't like them. I'm not a big fan. Um, but I, from what I hear, um, people are of the popular opinion that she's waiting to for him to die. Like yeah. she just really doesn't want him to be king. Like she doesn't like him. Um, why not? Why does she want him to die? But why does like well, because from he's what a I cruel understand- fucker? Like he's really cruel. Like if you watch the the um, the crown, it, it depicts him as a bit of an asshole, like a really oh, okay. bad person. And um, the the whole um, Princess didn't Diana he, thing. Yeah, did he cheat on Princess Diana? openly just like dude, fuck dumb, you dumb dude she was gorgeous like she's one of the most be- she was one of the most beautiful she had people a nice soul yeah, as well honor, like, and she was so good to people you cheat on that you dumb fuck i'm the cameras doing my head in it looks like you have a big white butthole that i'm staring into that thumps whenever i say things you say things it's great i love it um, um you you keep on talking Okay, um, good. So I just like I, I I always heard that people say that he'd never be king, and I didn't understand that. I was like, but he's next in line, if I'm not mistaken. Is it has something to do with the divorce? Like, what about that? What about the scenario means that he'll never be king? Um, I just I think maybe because he's too old, maybe he's getting too senile, and he he won't be able to fulfill his his duties. Um, what about that scenario? Just just because he's he's going to be too old by the time it happens. But the queen's fucking ninety, so I mean, like, it, there's obviously no age restriction on being king. It's just you, because it, is it like because he has younger sons? But wouldn't that mean like I remember reading like books about the way the monarchy ro- roams, and like uh, I remember Braveheart too. Like that motherfucker's just waiting for his dad to die so he could have the throne. So isn't that the way it's supposed to go? Yeah, but I think, I think there's like a threshold. I think that you've got to prove that you are of a certain mindset before you can do it. Um, 
And wasn't it a king that established divorce was okay? So, like, I would figure that, that that'd be something that was, like, you know, universally accepted by now. But, I mean, like, I don't know. That's just that's just me. It's just me being me on the podcast by myself. Um, hopefully Ken's not waiting in the background. Um, but I don't understand it. Like, I, I, I'm i sure he's just chomping at the bits to become king. Oh, my God. Um, don't worry, show it. I haven't, I haven't ruined the show yet. Don't worry. No, you, you'll you never ruin the show, dear. You'll be fine. Always fine forever because it's it's our show. Um, so it's it has nothing to do with the politics of it all. It's literally just that he, you know, as long as his mom's like, because he will be king, right? Like, if she dies tomorrow, he's king, correct? Um, yeah, I believe so. I believe that's how it works. Fucking. Right. There we go. Um, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. There you go. That because that would really like throw off the whole like hush the whole fucking like you know like the idea of the monarchy is that it's a lineage thing you know like you know from mother to father to son. Well, the that that, that adds um, a lot of um, like conspiracy theories as well because then they're like, well, wouldn't that just mean they're all inbred? <laughs> like. Like keep it in the family, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Has there's been a there's been a French king at one point, right? Or like, well, we were French invaded re- by the Saxons, which are French. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wasn't there a German king at one point? Yeah. Well, the the uh, a lot of the royal fact that they are German. <laughs> oh, are they? Oh, yeah. Shit. So so when Prince the Nazis Fr- were attacking fucking England, they were attacking their own kind. That's so fucked. Well, Prince wow. Philip is Prince Philip was a Nazi. Well, his family was a Nazi, but Nazi family. He's a Nazi Oopsies. family. Yeah. Um, but, oh, things change, guys. Well, speaking of <laughs> oh, <laughs> things change, they totally well, okay. change. Before before Ken comes in, because I don't want him to see it, um, I said something really terrible. Did you hear about this on on Thorskin? No. No, I said <laughs> something terrible on the show that made me come out the live stream, <laughs> grieve a little bit, and then come back because it was live. I want to see your reaction. Uh, to this okay. video, um, let me see what you let, tell me what you think. What year that's after season eight did World War II end? 1945, <laughs> bitch. But for the Japanese, it ended Who? many years later. What? Who was World War II against? Fascists. America versus fascists. Woo, woo. It was, it was actually you, you okay. Uh, Italy, Japan, Japan, Germany. Axis How about Germany? Germany? That main one. That How main about one? Germany? What They've never been the bad guys. Didn't, They've never been the bad guys. What didn't exist? What didn't exist at the end of the Second World War? Hiroshima. Oh, oh. You okay, Vegeta? Yes, just, just an aneurysm out of sheer stupidity. Wow. Didn't think you were that stupid, Vegeta. Ah! <laughs> oh, shit, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Alex. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't. Need to... Don't laugh, please. Don't laugh. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. Bro, <laughs> shit. That is... Fuck you for apologizing for that brilliant show. What's wrong with you? That was amazing. Oh my god! I cried. I was I not cried like like I, I was just like like whoa. Where did that wow. come from? Wow. And like, I'm bad for saying the hard R, not the the one with the the rap lyrics. I'm talking about the, 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 the special needs. Word. I have been watching so many documentaries about World War II at the moment, right? And I know how terrible these things are. Yeah, I can just spit this stuff out. It was humor. it was true. It was factual, Alex. You were you weren't lying. You know. I know, but you can't say something like that. So I'm pol- <laughs> yes, I apologize. You can. Yes, you can. Yes, right, you um, can. It our, was funny. Our guest is backstage. Um, okay. I've seen him. Well, always... um, Ken, um, when you're ready to to come in, just give us a thumbs up, and we'll um, we'll, br- we'll bring you in. You always got a thumbs up there. Look. Oh my god, that was okay. so funny. Tom, would you like to do the introduction, please? Uh, absolutely, guys. Um, so this next guest, I kind of hinted at a little bit earlier. I actually said a little bit about it earlier. Um, I have been a huge horror movie fan since I was ten years old, and the movie that really started it all is the movie that this man was a star of. Um, it is a cult classic. It is one of the greatest horror movies of all time. Please welcome. I'm swear to God, I'm a butcher's life. I'm gonna, Ken Free. Hey, <laughs> is that? Did I get it right? Did I at least come close? You came close. All right, <laughs> you, get all right. it. you got it absolutely right. Please, pl- okay, cool, cool, cool. Because I'm I butcher last names like you wouldn't believe. It's it's not my fault. I'm I'm. We have no easy surnames like Bruno. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm Whitley, yeah, and I get Whitley all the time. Whitley. Well, Whitley? I'll, t- I'll tell you something. They 
my grandfather said it's, it's French Huguenot, and it was F A U R E in France, and it's uh, F O R hyphen E E. So it's Foray. Foray, huh? All right, all right. But it is, but, but everyone, everyone in America and all the family says Foray, yes. and we've settled for that, and Foray is just absolutely fine. Okay, excellent. Thank you for excusing me for my for my non intelligence. No, 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 no. Very few people know foray. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ken, as you heard my big sloppy love for you, sir. Um, let me just kind of give you the 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 uh, the scene. I was um, I was like ten years old. My best friend in the world was this dude named Damien. His mom did not care what we watched at all. She had a huge VHS collection. And we were cooking raw burgers. Like we had hamburgers, like huge. Thing. I was used to be a really fat dude. Um, and we were having huge burgers and french fries for lunch. Cuddly. It was a snow it was day. Cuddly. I was so cuddly. I was such a cuddly little fat kid. And he was like, dude, you want to watch this? And he pulls out a VHS. And I was like, yes, let's watch it. Um, up until that point, I've, I'd seen the Friday 13th. So I've seen the Nightmare on Elm Street, some of the Michael Myers movies, you know, Halloween. All that type of stuff. And if anyone's ever seen the original 1978 Dawn of the Dead, they would know that the the practical effects in it are so out there, so realistic that they just like the opening scene is this um, this building of the they, they were ta- there's some domestic terrorists that were inside of it and they were kicking the door to kind of like, um, you know, take them out. But there's a zombie apocalypse going on in the background and like a, a person gets their neck ripped open in the first 30 seconds and the moment i saw that i was like this is horror like fuck the rest of it this is horror well, how does one oops, no, good, good. No, no, i was good. to say how does one become involved in something so amazing or did you have any idea like when you read the script like how do you how did you be get involved with with george a. romero i was going off broadway and uh, a, an actor and I were getting prepared to go on and he, at the WPA theater. But he said, yes, it's a, somebody's looking for someone that might, you might fit this role. And why don't you check it out? You Are you interested? I said, sure, write it down. And he gave me the address. I went up to Midtown and auditioned with, um, for George with Galen, Scott, and David. And... Uh, Richard Rubenstein was there, I believe. And that was the first audition. Second audition, they they called me back for another audition. I auditioned with three other individuals. And then a week later, they called me and said I had the role. Uh, just to give you a little, little fun back on that, uh, that, that first scene, that first scene where, the, where someone's bitten in the neck, I mean, the... The uh, guy, the guy's bitten in the neck of a guy who bits the woman in the neck. I'm not quite sure which one it is at this point, but I've, it's been so long. But and I've said it a hundred times. I should know. <laughs> but uh, that was our our test. If you can get past that moment, you can watch the entire film. We lost so many audience members at that moment. People would walk out, throw up, you know, scream, leave, whatever. You know, they, that was the moment that we said, "Okay, we got them. They'll stay for the entire film." So that was, uh, you know, but Scott and I put on a few screenings in New York, and <laughs> we knew as soon as that, that, as soon as that 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 flesh and blood started to pour out of that person's neck, that that uh, we would lose some of the audience, but those diehards would stay there. And we said, "Okay, we got these people at least." It, it makes you wonder because, like, they you, they talk about the exorcist. You know, people used to faint. They were rushing out of the theater because yeah, yeah, of how, yeah. Yeah. how scary it was. But then you have a movie like Dawn of the Dead, which is 10 times more graphic than the exorcist ever even thought about. And don't get me wrong, there's some stuff in the exorcist. You're like, wow, I can't believe that. I think it's more of the re- was religious the aspect, wasn't it? I was yeah. the manager for the, uh, for the Baronet Cornet Theater where the exorcist premiered. So I saw it every day. I uh, I managed the lines of four deep, in, uh, and I think it opened in midwinter. So we had uh, four inches deep, uh, four, four inches uh, wide, four, 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 four rows wide, and uh, went around the block all the way around to, I think, Blooming, it's across the street from Bloomingdale's, this this theater, Baronet Cornet, and I think it, it stretched from... Uh, it says Third Avenue. I'm not sure what it, what it was at that time. It's been a long time. All the way around Second Avenue, all the way around to First, 
So it was incredible. People stood in line in, I would say, ankle or above a, a deep snow to watch the exorcist. And I saw it every night for months, every day for months and months and months. Love that film. Love that film. And then no look at the back of my hand, you know. So go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Please. The, the, you have an aspect of you have this knowledge of history that me and Alex, you know, we were, we were 80s kids. So like a lot of this type of stuff, we only hear about secondhand from yeah. other people like yourself. So I love hearing about it. There's nothing wrong with you. Please, I'm that's all you want. I got plenty of those coming. Okay. <laughs> things, things that will take you back and then you say, where, what? I've only read about this. You know, I've got a little low age on me. So, I'm, But these, are, these, these things are starting to catch up on on us now, Tom, though, they, they just released the Pam and Tommy thing on Disney+. Plus. These are things that happened yes. quite late into our lives that we're kind of like, oh, my God, so they're making documentaries and films about this. Yeah, now. okay, yeah, okay. You guys were around for Pam and Tommy, were you? Well, <laughs> we, we were, but, like, only because, like, we were at that, you know, pubescent age or, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he has a like... sex tape out. Oh, my God, i got to oh, find yeah, this okay. on the interweb. What's the internet? Oh, Where are you? Oh gee. <laughs> so well, I'm, um, in, I'm in the age where you had a a, a, a uh, 16 millimeter in someone's uh, house, and you put it on the, uh, the screen was the white wall, and you had the old sex tapes. Yeah. <laughs> stag that films, that stag films, films at stag the time. Films, absolutely, absolutely. So, but funnily enough, sex tapes aren't like that. I mean, I don't know how we're going to get on this, but we are since it's already up. Uh, sex, sex tapes aren't even like a, our generation thing because there wasn't there a guy from MASH that had sex tapes back in the day. There was a whole movie made about him with Willem Dafoe about how he really started the trend of making sex tapes. And I forget what the movie was called. Damn it. I can't oh, remember. Stallone the top of my did one as well, didn't he? Stallone did one. Yeah, yeah. Stallone did one. But this is like back in like, uh, like the from 70s Mash? or something. The guy from MASH? I think it was the guy from Mash. It was like, or maybe he was, um, maybe he was a uh, what you call it. He, he oh, was. Oh, you like, you're not talking about uh, Hogan's Heroes, are you? Yes, Hogan's Heroes. Thank you, thank Hogan's you, thank you. Heroes. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. Yeah, he, he had, a, he, had a, he would take some of, uh, um, according to legend, he <laughs> would um, uh, take some of his uh, exploits. With the young ladies, and and with, I guess I don't know if he sold them or he just kept them for his own catalog. I think he and his buddy had a quite a, quite a, a little uh, organization going there, either for their personal enjoyment or or to share with friends. I'm not sure, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not even just an our generation thing. Ever since the camera was invented, somebody was like, "We should watch somebody fuck on this thing." That'd be the um, way to go. Before that, they had little booklets that you could flip. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And it revealed certain wow. yeah. um, actually actually it's it's funny you should say because i recorded uh, last year i recorded a podcast from on top of a, a an abbey in shrewsbury that's like a thousand years old right i'm literally on the roof and there's there's graffiti carved on the roof up there and there is like a, a cock and balls that's like <laughs> at, at least at least 300 years old so it, things have never changed i'm telling you no like, no, 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 no 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 it's just uh, i think they, they were they were talking about um uh, the sexual exploits of people before, I think, in, in yeah. uh, ancient Rome, and in fact, that even before that, and you know, I, I think all the way back to Africa and the first people that were yes. on the planet, how they uh, they were not uh, monogamous at all. They were fun. they were pretty much going after anything and everybody. So. Absolutely. And sex rules the world, my friend. It rules the world. No, it's always has, always will be. Always, always will, be. will be. It's a driving force. And yeah. God bless I, 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 I've got an ask, though. As, as, as an out, sorry, Tom. I didn't mean to just plow oh, into no, I that. For, I said for good reasons. To write stuff. No, no problem. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, <laughs> I have, um, because I'm with the movie world, the uh, movie world, the, the horror movie. Uh, Tom is the horror movie guy. I'm the guy that gets a little bit squeamish sometimes. I'll watch it, but sometimes I'll be like, oh, my God, that's a bit much, isn't it? Right, calm down. So, like, um, I've got to ask you, from the beginning, obviously you start working with horror movies and things. Um, but you, put, um, you know, going for your IMDb, you kind of stuck with that genre. Is this because it was a, a, a genre that you knew that was comfortable for you? Um, how, what made you carry on making horror movies throughout your career? <sighs> the demand. I was... Um... I was an actor. Brought, I mean, I, you know, I started in New York doing stage, and um, 
I did bingo long. I did a Kojak, and then I did bingo long traveling all stars and motor kings with Billy D. Williams, James Earl Jones, and Richard Pryor, and a oh, cast shit. of thousands. That in itself is an entire an entire hour long conversation about that film wow. and uh, the the coincidences in my career and that film. Um, and um, then I got Dawn of the Dead, and that kind of went viral. I mean, that I have to say that the um, distributors, Richard Rubenstein, uh, there's a producer and the distributor, Salah Hassan, uh, put this uh, film in every possible uh, major theater, every midnight show, and every drive in in this country, in every city in this country. And um, Dario Gento put it in every, did likewise in Europe. And, and it, it really got wide distribution and it became a, a mega hit. So that that uh, kind of launched me in the horror network, horror, horror genre, and I've been, uh, you know. But I didn't, I didn't know that there. I didn't know about the fan base. I was still working in television. Uh, did a lot of television work in the eighties. I um, I did some sitcom work, you know. So I, I was I was busy doing that, and and then occasionally a horror film would come up, and they say, "Oh, we want you." And I think the next one was um, From Beyond, then Texas Chainsaw Massacre, then, uh, you know, a few others. And then all of a sudden they started to pour in from everywhere. And um, so I, 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 you know, I enjoyed the fans and the movies were there. So I did them along with others. So it was a mixed match. I was doing, you know, a lot of television and doing horror films for a while. And now, yes. yeah. now I'm doing more horror films. And hope to do more television. <laughs> so, so we'll we'll turn that around. And I'll it's an amazing fun. career. I'm not I'm not disparaging. I think it's amazing, and what you've done is just fantastic. Oh, yes. so I'm, I'm very privileged um, to be speaking. Been to. lucky. So so Dawn of the Dead comes out in 1978, and the thing that I respect about the most is because like not not to be too little blunt about it, but you know people people like to typecast, people like to make assumptions, whatever it might be. But the thing about the film is like, you know, in, in comparison to a lot of the other films, your character, Peter is the one that has his shit together uh, completely all the time. There is no like time where you're like, Oh, I don't know about that. Like you always seem to know what's going on and what the next step is. And always, I mean, at the time, People probably weren't, you know, like they, they what's the best way to put this without making it sound so shitty, but like they would they would typecast a lot, I guess is the best way. And they would kind of make some people look look not in the best of lights. Would you agree that, you know, uh Dawn the Dead really kind of African Americans? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. absolutely. Like I well, I don't like to sound privileged or shit. Well, like no, 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 in e evolution, isn't it? Um that film, oh the black guy always dies first. And it's, it's yeah. like this cliche yes. thing. Yes. Yeah. Well, would you come from? Would you agree that um, that Dawn of the Dead was definitely one of those movies that kind of put a foot forward to what would come, where it's like it doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, uh, the hero is the hero, and that's the end of it? You know, I, I think Sydney did it with um, Lilies of the Field first. Mm. And I think others, a uh, few others followed. I think Harry Belafonte did a few uh, projects as well, where the black, um, as a black lead, and I think a romantic interest in some of them with, with uh, uh, if not a white woman, certainly a romantic interest with a woman in, in general, uh, any woman was was a it was a step forward, you know. And uh, I think that um, uh, Dwayne Jones was first. I knew Dwayne very well. We were in the same uh, community organization and theater, and. Uh, so he was first, and then I, I followed. So and then Terry Alexander after me. So you know there there have been you know others that I don't know if it was necessarily and George probably I don't I don't know that he's always said or I've heard that he's always said it was the best actor that he gave the role to, and uh, the best actor in the time in terms of Dwayne, and I suppose. You know, he, he selected, you know, I don't know why he selected me or, or, or Terry Alexander or why we've, we've he, he continued to use. I think uh, Gene Clark played the zombie in The Land of the Dead, and that was a pivotal figure as well. So I, I don't know. You know, I, I, I hope that, that uh, I have traveled a great deal, met many fans, and 
they many of them have come up and they've they've introduced themselves and talked to me about how I've changed their lives or how I started out. I've gotten I've gotten the uh, SWAT officers who say they, they they became SWAT officers and became SWAT and got into the SWAT division because of me because I influenced them. So it's you know that's you know it's been yeah it's been a it's been a it's, it's nice that you've you've been able to sort of positively affect so many people. What a great responsibility! It, 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 it's, have, it's, yeah. it's one of the surprising things about um, this film and my role and. Um, the community accepting it. It, it, it. It's probably the most humbling, um, most, most humbling event in my career is, is that I've changed so many lives and so many people and, and that they appreciate me. And uh, <clears throat> they, I'm like a hero to them. And I say, gee, <laughs> thank you very much. But <laughs> put my leg on, my pants on, one leg at a time like anyone else. But Thank you. I appreciate that. That's that's more than I expected, and probably more than I deserve. But but no, God bless man. you. But God bless you, and and thank you. That's great. Well, and you you got to you got to. That's a pretty humbling thing to have people come up and tell you that you you've really changed their life for the better. You've made them who they are, and I I get it all the time. It's Good. so often. It's just so, and it's just you know. What do you do with that? What do you do with that? Do you, I, I, they want to, they want to, it's, it's, it reminds me of someone who wants to kiss the king's foot and the king bends down and kisses their foot. You know, it's say, you know, thank you. You know, it's not me, it's you. So. Well, it, it probably has a lot to do with, I mean, aside from the fact that you were such a great character, that you, it was so well acted by you, sir. Like, I mean, honestly, it doesn't seem like as the movie progresses that you're really acting at all. Like, a lot, like, especially with a lot of like the interaction um, between you and, um, oh man, what's his, oh, I can't believe I'm spacing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, Roger, thank you, not Dave Emge, because that, funnily enough, I actually met Dave Emge years ago. He, um, he worked with my high school teacher who was in film. And um, uh, I was telling him about my love for the movie. And he's like, oh, I know Dave. And I was like, what? You know Flyboy? He's like, yeah, I know Flyboy. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. He actually did. Um, he judged it. We did this. We did this um, uh, small uh, uh, independent horror movie film competition way back in the day when I had my first kid. And um, Dave was actually one of the judges. It was a really, really cool thing because I, I love that movie. I got a picture of him on the wall and shit because I was like, I just love this. Um, but but the interaction between you and Roger, especially after Roger, spoiler, spoilers, if you have not seen a fucking 40-year-old movie, sucks to you. Um, go watch it, by the way. Um, if you've never seen Dawn of the Dead, Roger gets big. And when he's getting a little too cocky, um, when he's trying to like move the trucks, you and you and Roger are trying to move yes. the trucks, you're yes. trying to block the the. But really quick before I jump on that, how hard was it for you guys to record in a fucking mall? Like at the time, like they were huge at the time. It's not like malls now where they're kind of like dying out. Like this is the high time of the malls. How hard was that? This was um, this was the beginning of the the mall mall era. You know, we had. Uh, you know, you had malls popping up all over the country, and this is probably one of the in the first uh, first generation of, of malls that, that were launched in the country. Uh, it wasn't difficult. Uh, we shot at night, so when the mall closed, we stepped in. Uh, we, uh, I think, we got there to. I think our call time was seven or eight o'clock. By the time we were made up and ready to go, and everybody else and all the zombies were ready to go, and and the crew and the lighting, everybody was set up, and the mall closed, and we just took it over, and we were out of there before before the heart patients got there in the morning and were out. We couldn't have the heart patients see a zombie in the morning. <laughs> I got that, the. That, um, that, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah. You know, so. I have um. When I when I was like uh, like sixteen for Christmas one year I got um, the Dawn of the Dead cl- a definitive addiction uh, addiction yeah right addiction, addiction. yeah I got, I got the addiction well I got that when I was like, oh, were you with the addiction <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I got the definitive edition and it, it's got like twelve hours it's what got me started loving uh, special effects makeup was because they had like twelve hours of Tom Savini being the master that he is doing makeup and there's this beautiful shot of them just kind of like going over and you see like all these zombies just sitting there eating fucking McDonald's it was like the greatest thing i've ever seen in my entire life um i cannot think about it it's so funny um but really really quickly jump back though so it was so a big is- paintbrush with gray and they just just 
<laughs> just painted them. Every it, looked, them. <laughs> it looked amazing, though. And that's the thing is, like, Tom Savini did his makeup based off of what he experienced when he was in Vietnam, or based off of Vietnam, the, the pictures that he saw. Right. And um, so it was very, very realistic because that's the color that flesh turns, generally speaking, when oh, you die. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He had, he had the colors of the of death, certainly. Yes. 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 Um, but jump back to the Roger Newdall and how masterfully you acted it. Like Roger gets bitten um, during this whole scene, and the, like you know he's gonna die. Like you, you know, everyone knows that Roger's now gonna turn to a zombie, and you basically kind of have to like talk him, like not talk him through it, but like kind of like keep a conversation going as you see him like whittling, um, winding down into this transformation that's going through him, and it's it's just so beautifully done. Like I don't see any acting in there. I mean. Is that from the theater experience of it all, or have you always just been so fucking good? Well, I mean, it it, it was real. Hmm. You know, I, I had to, I had to, I, I had a choice. I had my choices before I, and the, fortunately, my choices worked well. But I, I had them established before I got on the plane to go to to go to travel to Pittsburgh. So, you know, and um, I knew that scene was coming up, I knew how important it was, and I also knew how uh, close we had become at that point in the film. And the dialogue, uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was all in the, it was all in the script, you know, what, what uh, he meant to me, what I meant to him, you know, I think he said, we got him, didn't we? We, we kicked their ass, you know, yes. that kind of thing. Yes. And I said, yeah, we did, Trooper. We sure did, you know. So there, there was a camaraderie there. and uh, But also, he's dying, and he's going to die, and I'm going to have to kill him. So that, that had to be, that it does has to be behind, uh, behind the, in the well, in coming out, radiate, it had to radiate out of my, my, my delivered lines and also the, the, uh, my look that had to come out, you know. The so brightness that had, you know, that said, that motivation, that uh, uh, that choice. And so, and, and as an actor, I had to just go for it. I did. You know. Some beautiful work and pioneering work as well. Because if you think about things like Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead, even as far as like Evil Dead, you know, these are like your archetypal sort of zombie films that that have in some aspects been recreated and bits taken out of over the years. And even like Shaun of the Dead, you know? <laughs> like, oh, you know, my guys, man. Don't, don't. Please, those guys, I love them. Oh, I love them. That's what I mean. and, and Simon Pegg, are you kidding? One you of the know? best zombie films ever made. <laughs> I love it so much. It was one of the best zombie films ever made, and it was funny. And, and, and John Mark, you want me to tell you the story about how I, I found out about Shaun of the Dead? Yes. Yes. I was, I was in the UK, and I saw these, um, uh, you know, in the tubes and traveling, you know, in, in a car. I would see these big billboards saying "Shaun of the Dead" and showing him. And I saw the red tag, but I didn't see for electric. I couldn't. See, it wasn't that visible for the big. But I was seeing, and I said, "Shaun of the Dead." I said, "Shouldn't I know something about that?" <laughs> Sounds like this may be something I should. They said, No, it's nothing. Just some. Uh, and of course, the people I'm, I was with were more into James Bond stuff. And there's so a lot of Bond people that were, you know, they, they weren't into horror. And so they kind of dismissed it. And I said, Oh, okay. And I kept looking, I, said, I saw it all over the UK. And I said, There's still something. I'm missing here. There must be something about this, but I didn't have time. I was busy doing it. I get back to the States and I'm at the San Diego Comic Con. And two young men, um, I think about 40 yards away from where I'm signing, I would say 40 yards, okay? They had the smocks on and they had these little red Sean uh, name tags. <laughs> And they were two, you know, like they looked like they were in their teens, 15, 16 year old guys. And they looked at me and I, I said, hey, come here, come here, come, come, come. And they ran away. <laughs> I said, what the hell? What's going on? I said, this is crazy. So I'm signing. And then later, a guy comes up to me and says, hi, um, I'm Megan Wright. 
So, yeah, hi, I'm Ken Forey. I know, I know. I, know. Uh, I produced Shaun of the Dead. I said, I want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> what is this about? <laughs> well, we want to invite you to our, our screening our premiere here in San Diego to Gas Like Theater. I said, oh, okay. Oh, Simon's coming up in a minute. Then, oh, hi, I'm Simon Pitt. Okay, hi, how are you? Okay, good. Son of the day? Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. Will you come? I certainly will. And that's how I got to see Sean of the Dead. And then we spent the night drinking and talking almost until sunrise. Oh, that sounds like a perfect yeah. evening. The perfect yeah, what evening. What an evening. Yeah. I've been uh, supporters. I'm, I'm a huge fan of both of these gentlemen. Great mm. and genius. And uh, really uh, love him to death. Edgar Wright is a genius. He really is. Yeah. And, is. and Simon Pegg is a genius as well. Hmm. Yeah. Before totally. Edgar, He's a talented individual. And they're both very talented. They're both... Uh, I, I don't know. They're, they're, they're special. Very special. For me. Yeah. Before we uh, jump off the Dawn of the Dead at all, um, one of my one of our good friends, a uh, past guest as well, um, Ash Wilding, um, he uh, he's making a movie called Incognito. It's it's based in the seventies and eighties. He's also a massive Dawn of the Dead fan. That was what bonded me and him together. So I was like, hey, by the way, I'm I'm talking to somebody you'd want to ask a question to. Do you want to? Do you have a question for him? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I got like fifty. I was like, no, no, just, <laughs> just one will do. Fine. And um, so I'm gonna read this. And one of them, what well, part of it you kind of answered, so you don't have to really elaborate too much on that part. But maybe on the second part. Um, how did you get the part in both Dawn of the Dead films? Was it what was it like to work on set? You you kind of we definitely kind of touched on the Dawn of the Dead at all, but you were in the you were in the remake too, weren't you? Yes, the, and 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 it was a very dicey situation because you know it, it, there were so many threats, and the fans were in such an uproar about someone trying to make a remake. And I had heard so many rumors and so threats. Uh, they're gonna bomb the place. Then they don't do it. Uh, we we will really involved in it. That kind of thing. And I originally they had a part for me, and uh, I just passed. And I said, "Well, I don't wow. need, to, need to do this." And uh, then I already did that yeah. once. I don't need to do it again. <laughs> well, I um, then then we got to a to the, um, uh, I guess, the, the in, almost the end of the film. And um, my agent and I talked, and we said, well, I think they were still asking, you know, would it come up? And my agent said, to me, maybe we should do this. And I said, man. Are they still are they still threatening to bomb the place? Well, they haven't bombed it yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay, so instead of doing the, I think I was, I was going to do the deputy sheriff role or something like that. Instead of that, I did the televangelist role. Yes. They, gave, they created a role for me. And that's how I got involved. You know, I went and, um, you know, talked to some of the cast members, but, you know, they were busy shooting. And uh, we spent a few seconds or uh, a minute or two talking. And uh, so it's an okay experience. I think it's a good horror film. Entertaining, well done. Not as good as the original. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. It, it, it was very. It was a fine film. But I'm sorry. Like I, I will always have a huge. I had the poster of Dawn of the Dead on my wall. That was the first like real movie poster I ever got. Was Dawn of the Dead. And of course, not an original. But like it just spoke to me. Like it spoke to me in in a lot of ways of like you know this is what um, horror movies used to be and like of course I was in the era of like the '90s and stuff where it, things had dramatically changed like CGI had really got run rampant in films and if you want to see a prime example of what special effects makeup was and what it could possibly be and its best um, examples of Dawn that is on top of the list um, the next time I see you sir I'm watching a movie um, I saw I saw a movie called um, House of Thousand Corpses. And I was like, "Huh, this is this is an interesting film. Really, really interesting stuff." And I, I kind of dug it. I, I saw a lot of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre in it, so I was like, "Yeah, you know, I get it." But then I saw Devil's Rejects, and <sighs> Devil's 
Rejects is just if if you've never if any, any listeners never seen it, it, it's one of the great. I love that film. It's my favorite Rob Zombie film. Period. And it was another one of those movies that spoke to me. And it wasn't until years later that I put the two together. Cell is off. Just a moment while this device reconnects. Oh, sorry, guys. I got all kinds of electronics going on. Oh, it's all good. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome. I've, had, I've had electrical problems today as well. <laughs> <laughs> my my camera will stop working. It's fine. It's good. Oh, my goodness. So, 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 so you're saying that um, you didn't connect the two? No. I'm, I'm horrible at that. Like, literally, Alex is the guy that tells me. He's like, by the way, that guy was in that too. I'm like, what? And then, you know, I, of course, I figured that one out by myself. But how did you get involved with Rob Zombie? He called me. He called my agent. They, they, I think they sent my agent the, uh, the script, and um, you know, my agent eventually said, "Did you read the script?" I said, "What script?" I said Rob Zombie. I said, "Really? Okay." Because uh, I didn't know Rob. I didn't know. Um, I'm a Mo- I'm a Motown guy. You know, um, I love. I love good music. I don't care who, what it is. I can do country. I can do hard rock. I can do Motown. I can do uh, classical. It doesn't matter if it's good. It's good, and I, you know, I like good stuff. You know, so. Um, but I'm a, I'm a real I'm a real sucker for crooners and and you know that kind of thing. I love love voices, and so I wasn't familiar with Rob, so I didn't know him. And uh, so I, re- I read it and uh, went down and spent the, about 20 minutes, 15 minutes talking to him. And that was it. You know. Next thing I was, I was on, the, on, on the set two weeks it's, later. It's amazing because, like, if you don't know anything about horror movies, you might miss quite a bit. But, I mean, Rob seemed like he wanted to take a lot of people from horror movie, like, classic. Uh, like he the, got the everybody. <laughs> He got the guy from um, from uh, the Hills Have Eyes as like your like your like he friend. The Hills Have Eyes. He, he's got he had my God. He had Danny Trejo. He had Diamond Dallas Page. Yes. He had um, oh God. Who else did he have? He had um, oh God. God, I can't think of her name. She does Rugrats. Oh God. No, was, 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 yeah. was Tara and, Strong in there? And no. She was, uh, no, she was. Um, God, I can't think of a name. God, what's wrong? Alex is good. Alex is looking out. Don't worry. She played one of my played one of my my ladies. And, oh uh, yes, 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 yes. Now, I mean, it's it's there's completely different roles, obviously. Like like Peter and him are, have nothing to do with one another. How'd you go? What was your approach to to be this character? Like, where'd you grab your influences from? <sighs> well, you know, it's so, sometimes you've got. Well, I I had known. A few very um, gregarious, uh, <laughs> gregarious um, women chasers or uh, well, procurers of of uh, the product and sellers of the product. I've known a few pimps, <laughs> so I kind of got some took some of that from them. You know, I knew a few people who had, who had done. And that kind of work all their lives, and how they felt about women, and how they care themselves. And I think everything. It would, one thing, I think, I, and I read um, Iceberg Slim. I don't know if you know that that book. No. no it's, it's, it, yeah, Iceberg Slim. It's pimp by Iceberg, and it's by a guy by the name of Iceberg Slim. I read that early in my twenties, early in my twenties, maybe about nineteen or twenty, and it always stuck with me about how he. He, what what he felt about his his profession and how he departmentalized it in terms of you know money, women, morality, business, and they all had their own departments. And he was his, and he was like a he was like a banker. This goes here, this goes here. Nothing. These don't meet. You know. And that was pretty much it. There's, there's a selfishness uh, some, uh, about a pimp. You know, they, I mean, they was, there's a giving. Uh, they can be generous to a to a fault in some ways, but also there's a selfishness that that is. It's about them, and it's about the business. It's about moving the business forward, and anything that disrupts it is a problem. And uh, so, 
But when my brother showed up, with, <laughs> with bringing the law with him, it's a problem. You got to go. So that's why I, I think I think my line was business is business, baby. You yes. know, which certainly fit the and that that was a perfect line Rob wrote, and I certainly uh, was one of my choices. Business is business. It's beautiful, man. It really is. I, I love that so much. Um, out of, so as long as your career has been, I'm sure there must be a, a thousand like best moments you've ever experienced. But you, uh, what was like, like think of like a top one or two. What are the the, the experiences that really stand out to you? Like, wow, I can't believe that happened to me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right, it's a good question. It's so long. My first, my first movie. I. I I'll just give you give you a long story about that. Please wrap it up. Oh, love it. Okay, bingo. Um, my grandfather was a baseball fan, and especially a fan of, of all baseball and the Negro Leagues, especially with as they were called then. And he would take me and my cousins, uh, two other cousins, all all three of us boys, would take us to uh, see the Indianapolis Clowns. They were like the Harlem Globetrotters of baseball. And they were funny. They were talented. And they always gave you, you always had a great laugh. It was just a lot of fun. We'd see them every year. And they were from Indianapolis, supposedly, because they were called the Indianapolis Clowns. And I lived in Indianapolis. So my father, my grandfather was from Macon, Georgia. My, uh, and um, I think... Um, my grandmother was from Macon. I think my, my grandfather moved to Macon or something, but they were all in that area. And years later, when I become an actor, my first major uh, film is Bingo Long, Traveling All-Stars and Motor Kings. It's about the Negro mm-hmm. Leagues. And it has, besides James Earl and Richard and, and uh, Billy D and Stan Shaw, Tony Burton, a cast that I can't, I could go on forever with the cast of people in that film. Um, Marsha McBroom, I gotta mention, mention my, my dear, dear Marsha McBroom, uh, one of the most beautiful women in the world. Um, they had, uh, you know, it, it was, it was, it was shot in uh, Macon, Georgia. It was about the Negro Leagues. And I was shooting it where my grandfather had, uh, been, been raised and about the subject that he had spent a great deal of time teaching me about, you know, and it was like, what am I, this is the first film, major film I'm on, and it's about this, which was a childhood, you know, education for me with my grandfather in his hometown in Georgia. So, you know. What, what was that like for you uh, emotionally? I, 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 it was great. <laughs> I It was a great time and it's being on a set with so many major, major uh, players. It was it was surreal, and I didn't. The great thing about it is that I didn't work that much, you know. So, <laughs> and that's you know, it's not a great thing. Uh, but I did. I didn't. I got a. I had to spend a lot of time seeing making Georgia and going around and meeting a lot of people. And, mm-hmm. and it was, it was, a, it was probably one of the great, I did, I did my work, but it, but it was in terms of having a great time on a set. Uh, I met, I'll give you another example. I got a call uh, and, and an invitation said a limo would pick me up. We're going for this party at the hotel, the Hilton. We're staying at the Hilton. I said, okay. So I got dressed in something, you know, not, not you know, it's casual. It's going to be a picnic or something like that, you know. I got dressed in a casual affair and I went down and there's a limo for me. And I said, where's everybody else? And where are the other cars? They said, it's just for you. I said, really? Okay. So the limo, I get in the back of the limo. The limo takes me out to this lake and this cabin on an island on the lake, A-frame cabin and this big property. 
And I'm the only black person there. I'm looking around. I said, where's the rest of the the cast? Oh, I'm sorry. They didn't have this clowns of, but on, on this uh, team, by the way. Mm. That's oh, okay. the tie-in. I'm, I'm sorry. That was the tie-in. I, I left it out. The Indianapolis oh. Clowns are also on this team. So okay. Indianapolis Clowns are there. Macon's there. My grandfather's there. No, that ties it all together. I'm sorry. No, and, no. So, and so I'm looking for the Indianapolis Clowns. I'm looking for Billy D. I'm looking for James. I'm looking for anybody. And I'm seeing nobody. And I'm the only black face there. I'm looking around. And there are hundreds upon hundreds of people. Some playing horseshoes. Some playing bad uh, uh, volleyball. Uh, people in the lake on jet skis. It was, you know, a big canoe, you know, people barbecuing. I said, wow, who are these people? What are and finally, I see someone I know. It's Rob Cohen. You know Rob Cohen? Oh, shit, yes. Yeah, yeah, Rob Cohen. Well, Rob Cohen was our producer for Big Along. Mm-hmm. And so Rob was standing, and there were people standing around him, and he was talking to someone. And I see Rob from a distance. I say, okay, I know somebody. <laughs> so I walk up and I walk through these guys with black suits. You know, I walk this right through them. You know, excuse me, we're get away. I see Rob. <laughs> Rob, what you doing? How you doing? Okay, Ken, how you doing? Ken, this is um, Jimmy, Jimmy Carter. Oh. Oh, Jimmy, 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 okay, good, good, good. This is when Jimmy Carter was running for president. He had a Secret Service all around him. I just went right through that line. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, hey, assholes. I'm Ken Free. Oh, <laughs> man, please. So, so it was, um, uh, and I, 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 I teamed up with a couple of guys. I don't know where they are, but they were country and Western producers. Oh. They wore. Um, the cowboy hats, straw hats, the buckles, the jeans, the boots, they were the real thing. This wasn't the dress up. This was there every day. And we hooked up and drove. I'm driving in the back of the car, back seat. They're driving up front. And we drove. We're driving through Georgia at night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I am. I'm <laughs> back road. And we go to another small town and the Almond Brothers are playing. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And so we go backstage and we're sitting there uh having a little puff puff and talking to the, the um you know, talking to Greg and all the Almond Brothers, you know, having a good time. Wow. But you like you like you like Forrest thing. Gump. You like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just shows up everywhere. I fucking love it. That was exactly it. Amazing. <laughs> that was exactly it. That was the first wow. step on that film. I swear, everything and, and things like that happened all the time during that shoot. For That's me. fantastic. That, I that, love that. That was a fantastic thing about it. I'm, besides being around some of the uh, um, uh, some of the best talent and hmm. being around. Uh, uh, Majestic Richard Pryor, one of the gentlemen, mm. and uh, of course the teacher James Earl. Oh, and, uh, a legend! Yes, yes, and then Billy D. Billy D. The, the gentleman, the squire. It was just, it was just, and then all the others. I mean, the, the Indianapolis Clowns, Stan Shaw, Tony Burton. And we have a cast of thousands. And I was having, I think I worked, I don't know if I worked on that film. If I, I was there about two months and worked about a week in total, you know, in terms of days, you know, Richard gave a party. Uh, right. He went to the house and he gave a party. And he, um, <laughs> <laughs> this was a great party. His mother and father came down. His family came down. So I met his mother, his father, his, his, aunt, his grandmother. I met his, his, his grand, you know, that, that grandfather. And so uh, they were um, have, they had a, had, they had this, this house, and everybody was there, crew and some cast members, but mostly crew. 
And usually for that kind of party, uh, you have people that are against the wall or they're not dancing or they're a little reserved or they don't want to let their hair down or they're, they're trying to protect whatever, you know, some, you know, you know people aren't always so uh, easygoing at all, all sorts of events. And certainly that's, that was the norm. These people were sweating, doing somersaults. I mean, they were they were just dancing their butt off. I was stunned, and I was dancing. I said, "Wow, this is a great party! Everybody's getting it up." And and it was a very, you know, mixed with with um, white and black, so it was you know it was, it was a it was a hell of a mixture. And then all of a sudden, the music died. I said, "What the hell? The music's dying. The party's great. Why would the Richard came out and said, I just wanted to play you my first, my album just released. Oh, shit. An album just released. So that didn't tell us that far back. Mm -hmm. And it was, that in is crazy. And uh, it had Miss Rudolph on it, on the the, the Miss Rudolph skit. And it was so funny. (laughs) We sat, I sat there and I was sitting next to a guy that was a publicist. On the couch, we were laughing. I was falling off the couch. I was laughing so hard. It was so funny. And I then I looked around, and there, those people who were so loose and, and having a great time, all of a sudden reverted to statues. <laughs> and I what? said, yes. I said, how can you... How can you not laugh at this? How can you not be in stitches? I'm I'm about to roll on the floor. I think I did roll on the floor. I said, and you people are standing there. Uh, this is Richard. This is but and if you get that that, that album, uh, Miss Rudolph with the Miss Rudolph stuff, is one of his best. Yes. And 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 I I was I, I couldn't believe it. So, but it was it was those kind of events that happened throughout that that two to two and a half month period, meeting, uh, uh, being with Rob Cohen and John Batum. You know, John Batum was fun. <laughs> I have a, I have I a hypothesis. I got photographer crazy because I was a new actor. I said, wait, 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 wait. let's talk about the take. <laughs> and he said, don't talk to me. <laughs> I have a hypothesis about why everyone was not in stitches the way you were, sir. And this is just a guess, you know, because, you know, knowing the history of Richard Pryor as I do, I would say that it has something to do with the fact that they were doing somersaults 30 seconds for because if anyone's ever uh, like backstory, I went to a I went to a comedy show. I went and saw Burt Kreischer with my wife. It was my birthday. I, I bought some, you know, stuff I probably shouldn't have been doing, but I figured out that night there's certain things that just don't mix well with comedy. And knowing that it was a Richard Pryor party, I can only imagine the thing that was making them all go like, let's do summer stuff and just have a lot of fun. Probably didn't translate very well. Whereas I was going like, yes. to interject and be like, the, you know, I can just imagine you, Ken, walking around going, everybody's got lots of energy. It's really <laughs> so nice to much see. energy. <laughs> so, so much energy, energy these guys <laughs> got. <laughs> <laughs> is, does everyone have the sniffles? What's going on right now? Because I should. Did somebody, did somebody take a pill or something? Is, is, is the pump spiked? What happened? Oh, oh yeah, it was spiked. So, yeah, yeah, Alex, yeah. Alex, Alex, you you have a question from our past guest. Um, I do actually, and it's it's somebody you have worked with, and that's Chris Battle, who um, was the animator for El Super Bisto. Yeah. Yes, um, and what we do is we ask our our guests uh, a question for the next guest. Obviously, you don't know who's coming on next, and Chris didn't know either. Um, and he wrote, um, uh, what guilty pleasures would you like to admit to, as in music, TV, what would you like to sing to in the car? What, what guilty pleasures do you enjoy? Oh, God. <laughs> that you'd like to admit to, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything you want. You don't have to say anything you don't want to say. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> You know, I'm pretty much not. Um, people might think that I'm I'm out there. I'm doing a lot of things. I, I, I'm a I'm a. I would rather sit and watch a documentary and have a glass of uh, of crystal light, or or <laughs> on a on a real good day, maybe a fine wine. You know, mm-hmm. that's that's who I am. So. Um, but well, Do you, you, should hear me, you should hear me singing in the car on the on the yes. freeway 
and trying to sing old old uh, rhythm and blues Manhattans and you know, those old songs, Smokey. <laughs> I got a great Smokey story, but I I'm not gonna tell it. I can't do it. No, oh, no can't, do it. Can't, do it. can't do it. But I, I yeah, but I, I you know I think um, I think probably that I I, I probably have a, a sweet tooth. So anybody that's gonna show me something sweet, I'm gonna be very angry and very very um, uh, thrilled at the same time. <laughs> How no, dare you buy me this thing? I'll tell kind of you buy, <laughs> How dare you bring this given here? <laughs> I'm going to eat this in front of you. Yeah, teach you I'll eat this later and don't do it again. This, this, it, I'll let you know if it tastes good. If it does. This Mars yeah. bar is an abomination. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the stomach of Ken Faree can make this better. Oh, please, please, That's I'm, amazing. Um, weight. Yeah. Now we have a stop it. You look amazing, sir. You really do. For for a man that was, you know, how how really quick because I know we're we're almost done. Um, uh, how old were you in in nineteen? I mean, you know, the, when you found all that. How I don't old know. were I stopped, you? I stopped counting. I stopped Good. counting my Good. birthdays. I stopped counting my birthdays, and I and and I stopped counting them early because I got bored with counting them. <laughs> early, I think it's in my twenties or my thirties. I said. I said, okay, it's birthday. It's time. I know I know this, that's my date. Okay, next day, please. So we can get on with my life. Somebody send me cards, there's some cards. I get birthday stuff. I throw parties. People have tried to throw parties, and I said, don't, but they do. And I say, okay, hey, go. Okay, no. So not that it matters. I'm not, I'm not a I'm I'm kind of a kind of a curmudgeon about that. Immortal? Kind of yeah. That's where you are. You're mortal because you look amazing for oh, fucking yeah. whatever age you are. I'm, I'm, at the, I'm Dorian Gray. Yes! I wish. So, Ken, on that line, now on the line of thinking of the next guest, um, would you do us a favor and ask a question that we can pose to the next guest, sir? Who's the next guest? Well, oh, we, we can't tell you. you. That's the thing. Know. That's we don't know. One side any, of it, you know. Any question. Okay. If. You had a chance to relive a moment and change it. What would you do? Excellent question. Excellent question. I love to see Alex thought about this a couple episodes ago, and I was like, what's he doing? And then he does it. I'm like, that's fucking brilliant. You're not going to talk about what I'm doing now, guys. I'm writing, you know. Oh, well, that's that's the thing. That's the last thing that we do. The last thing that we do. Oh, is, good, good, good. That's the last thing in, that we do. Is, what I'm doing besides yeah. acting. Ken. And uh, what are we doing right now, good sir? Well, well, I've got John Henry, which is on Netflix, and I've got um, I think of a rift on on Amazon Prime. They're still streaming, so I have to mention them. And uh, I'm man. going to um, not play a wacky character on, on in John Henry, so you should look at that for for a laugh. Uh, he's a pretty funny guy, and. Um, I'm writing a six hour limited, I've written a six hour limited series that we're trying to push right now, historical drama. Oh. And I'm also, uh, I've also got a a serial killer uh, script that I've, I take the serial killer from the time they're five years old till they're uh, in their adolescence and their teens and all the way until they're in their late thirties and have killed several, mm. several dozens of people. Uh, and they continue to kill. Similar to and and it's similar to and I didn't I didn't mean this mm -hmm. I didn't mean for this to happen, but when I write I just let it go and whatever comes out. Yeah, this is I look I think I got I think I got in a second draft, and I said, damn, this is Halloween. <laughs> it's similar, 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 very similar because I the, I play the a, a psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, really kind of you know. Recognizes who the kid is and, and knew him for the child, and did, and made the mistake of not reporting to the child welfare to stop this thing. So he feels guilty about it, and uh, so he comes to him again. I'm in high school when he's at the high school as a psychiatrist, and the kid's still kind of crazy. And then he then he puts it all together and all the, puts the pieces together. Eventually, as these murders are happening, and he says, "Oh, this is this kid. This is the one I should have." At five, at eight years old, I could have, I could have stopped this. This is that same kid I saw it when he was seventeen. I could have done something. Why did I must end it? I'm out after him. 
as well. Ooh. How how far along are you with the book? The script. The script. Oh, sorry, sorry, script. I, th- I, th- I thought you said yeah, See, I take writing as books. I'm, I'm very <laughs> simple. <laughs> I Finish? should write books. I should write books is a better way. To yes, I like yeah. books. I like uh, books on tape, especially. So, so are you shopping the script around right now? Is that the process? I'm, I'm, is, is that I'm, the next step? I'm beginning to shop around. I'm um, starting to get into that 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 deep deep ocean with the sharks. So, I'm going to see what happens. Uh, I w- I'm, yeah, I am. I'm shopping around. I I, I, I do this. I found that in my uh, this talent, I, I really haven't tried to write anything my entire life, seriously, and 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 but a letter, but uh, anything other than a letter. And I found that uh, I have this talent. Well, you've been immersed into this this universe for such a long time. I'm I'm pretty sure subconsciously you've soaked up so much knowledge. I bet there's something amazing. Inside you, ready to come out. You know, it, it, pours out it pours out. I guarantee you. So I, yeah, and I'm very proud of the stuff I've gotten. Mm-hmm. I, from from the people that who supposedly know, it's very good stuff. So mm-hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, I'll yeah. say as well. You, you have an amazing voice, and I was going to ask you, like during yeah, COVID and when when everything sort of stopped, did you ever think I'm going to do some voice stuff? I'm thinking of it now. I think I, I think I'm, I'm I should I should approach yes. that at this point. So yeah, I'm I'm really considering it very very seriously at this point. Hmm. Good. I, I I want you to read me bedtime stories, Ken. It's just so <laughs> fucking silky smooth, man. I love Drink it. Twinkle twinkle little star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we uh, we could uh, could we could we ask Ken to do an intro for you, sir? Right? Uh, yeah, we can do that. We can do that. Okay. What else to do? That's what else to do. If he wants to do it, that's what we can. Uh, what we what, what, what we'd ask you to do, Ken, if you wouldn't mind, is Ooh. just to say. Um, hello, you're well. You're listening to You Suck Podcast Network. Would that be all right? Sorry, say it again to me. Um, hi, and welcome to You Suck Podcast. No, the welcome to You Suck with Al and Tom. Yes, welcome to You Suck with Al, Al and Tom. Yes, yes, please. Okay. Yes, okay. Hi, welcome to You Suck with Al and Tom. That's brilliant. Excellent. I love yes. it. I'll, yes. I'll, 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 I'll snip that little bit out and I'll put it at the beginning yes, of an episode because yes, you've got you an amazing voice. Yep. Yes. Um, you will be joining such uh, great legends as Billy West, who uh, did us uh, did us a solid and did uh, Zap Brannigan for her, one of and, our things. And, and Charlie Adler, uh, too. And Charlie Adler. Yes, he did. Yes, he oh, right, did. I guess I forgot about that. I always forget about that because we always use uh, we always use uh, Billy West. Um, guys. Where are you guys? This, so I can advertise you and stuff like Where are you guys? Anyway, where are you located? Um, um alex lives in the shrewsbury uk um which is i don't know somewhere i it's it's on google maps i'm sure <laughs> he's not making it up <laughs> sometimes i think alex doesn't live anywhere he's just in a I, hole somewhere i live in shrewsbury uk which is uh the birthplace of charles darwin okay yeah. tell, can you tell me how far sussex is from uh wales uh, can you alex i'll tell you right now um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, good, well, where in Wales? Cardiff, uh, Wales? Uh, probably the capital, I guess. Whatever okay. capital. Is. I am from Vermont, um, and I live in the middle of the woods, which makes me sound like I'm a hermit or something. But I'm not. I just, love your state. I've been there. Yeah. I, I travel. I hitchhiked through Vermont. Get the and fuck then, out of you, no, dude! No, no, Rum, Rumney. You know Rumney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, nobody knows Romney outside of the people in the front line. No, of course people. not. It's like Romney, but it's good. I was to Romney and I said, I was in New York. I, I lived in New York at the time. And I went to Romney and I said, damn, there's more going on here that's going on in New York City. This is a crazy place. <laughs> they were pretty um, wild. <laughs> funnily enough about Vermont, like a little bit of like history, actually one of like the first most prominent, I mean, it didn't, they didn't become famous until years and year, years later. Um, but there's a band that's from Vermont, a band called Death. And uh, they're like the first um, back in like the 70s, I think they are. They're, they're kind of like proto-punk, but they are the first like uh, black rock band and they discover they essentially discovered punk like they their sound was so fast they're very whoish they're very like you know they have like the sound but they were doing it so fast and so different than everybody else was doing at the time and it's a band called death they actually made a documentary since you like documentaries you can check it out it's, it's a mm-hmm. band called death um abcd it's okay, excellent okay. documentary I'll take a look at that yeah absolutely and, they, and they're out of uh out of vermont, vermont. 
Yeah, yes. Well, um, well, they were from um, they're from somewhere else originally. I can't remember off the top of my head. This is a while ago. I saw the documentary, but they had uh, two brothers. Um, I, I don't want to spoil because it it's in the documentary, but two of the brothers ended up moving to Vermont. And one of the brothers was like, hey, you need these tapes because somebody's going to come looking for this music one day. And I want mm-hmm. it to be ready. And it's it's a phenomenal documentary. I, I strongly recommend it. Um, okay. Scott Mosier, uh, Smodcast fame, uh, was the producer on it. Um, Ken, the, the band called Death. A band called Death. Yes, gotcha. ABCD. Gotcha. Um, Ken, you are a gentleman. You have an amazing history. You have the best stories I've I've heard in years. Um, if you do end up shopping your script out, I I really want you to come back on and hype that up. I'd love yes, to hear please more do. About yeah, that's yes, amazing. Yes, please. I'll let you know, guys. Listen, if it, you know things things warm up, I'll give you a little shout and we'll come on and talk about it. Huh? That'd be yes. amazing. Yeah. Oh, that'd okay. be so great. So, the, Ken, how, how far as well from Sussex? So you're yeah. three hundred, yeah. Alex. <laughs> <laughs> it's three hundred and ten miles, which uh, takes about four hours eighty. Three hundred and ten miles. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's a hike. Yeah, you yeah, can get there in a hike. second. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit. Um, <laughs> That's from Cardiff to, to Sussex. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah. guys. Um, first of all, you can thank you. Um, okay. Ken, where can people if one they if they want to keep track of what you're up to? If they oh, want to, I'm, 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 I have a web page and and uh, this coming this we're launching, so look for that coming up. Kenfoy.com, not up as of yet, but will be soon. And also, I'm at Instagram Kenfoy8 and uh, Twitter and also uh, Facebook. So hit me somewhere. I'm there. Excellent. Well, I know who I'm for a question when I'm done with this. Anyways, uh, guys, this has been an amazing episode. I, I love this with all my heart. I, I, I'm so excited this got accomplished. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, you know, if you if you like this episode, you probably like the rest of our episodes. You can check out usucknetwork.com. It is our website. It is the home and hub for everything that is usuck. They have this amazing show right here, usuck podcast. And we also have uh, Thor's Ken, which is our we- weekly Wednesday night live show, which is what it used be called by the way and um it's phenomenal moose cooper um david rabies and alex wheatley they all get together <laughs> and they have a great time alex says horrible things that make me laugh uncontrollably oh, uh, stop mm, yeah you're not, wrong. And you're not wrong if you if you like these shows and you think that our website looks amazing don't give us the credit for it you can give the credit to the people who actually built the website uh the good people are weborchard.com Weborchard.com, guys. They build websites websites for a living. That's what they do. They don't uh, make cookies and sell them, you know, on Etsy or something. But funnily enough, you could actually do that with what they do. They will build you a fantastic website. If you ever thought about representing yourself in the best light possible, and you're like, man, I want a website to do X, Y, and Z, but I just don't have the time or the patience or the skill level. Guess what? They do. They are amazing at their job, and they built our website for us. So if you are looking yeah, for a website and you want a fun, functioning website, check out uh, Weborchard.com. All right. This was excellent. Um, thank you very much, Ken. You are a fucking gentleman and scholar, and I love everything about you. Um, I love your stories, man. I can't wait yes, to hear this back. I really can't wait to hear it. Yeah, yes. the um, this has been You Suck Podcast. I am Tom Bruno. I'm Alex Whiteley, and we'll, we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. All right, listen up, spuds. This is Zap Brannigan, eh? master of time, space, and everything else in between, and... Uh... Oh, yeah. Winner of this year's Modesty Award. Yeah. You're listening to You Suck with Al and Tom. You're one stop for this sort of thing. Yeah.